Over the past few hundred years, human beings have discovered over 250,000 different extinct species through the remains and imprints they leave behind in the form of fossils. Almost all of what we know about our Earth's ancient past is from these delicate fragments that it has left behind for us to find. So many species have been identified, named, and speculated about through their fossils. But sadly, not all extinct species have left behind these glimpses into the past. A huge amount of the creatures we do know about have only left behind not-so-well-preserved fragments of their entire skeleton, and a staggering amount of species were never preserved and thus will never be discovered by us. This is mainly because of an obstacle called preservation bias, when climate, geography, and many other key factors affect the likelihood of fossilization in a certain area. Today I wanted to delve a little deeper into preservation bias in this short video and explain why and how it affects fossilization. So let's talk about preservation bias in the fossil record. To understand preservation bias, we must first understand the process of fossilization. The formation of fossils is extremely rare. The most common form of fossilization, permineralization, requires the organism to be in the proper location with the proper climate and geography. You've probably heard of this process before if you have any interest in paleontology at all or have passed fifth grade. So basically, an organism dies and gets exposed to mineral-rich waters. This water and the sediment in it seep into the pores in the bones, wood, or shell. After a really, really, really long time, this forms an internal cast of the remains, which exists for long after the actual organism itself and its remains have decayed. So, in short, no matter what those little kids' books tell you, there is no such thing existing today as a dinosaur bone, just rocks that have formed to be the same shape as them. So, like I said, this process requires a lot of things to happen correctly in a certain way, which leads us into the concept of preservation bias. Have you ever noticed how dinosaurs are very rarely depicted in places like mountains? This is because we have barely any fossil evidence of mountain-dwelling dinosauria. You see, for permineralization to take place, the remains had to be exposed to mineral-rich waters for an extended period of time. And water, of course, isn't very common on mountains because of this funny little thing called gravity. Because of this, water isn't able to make contact with the remains long enough to fossilize them. This likely means that, sadly, almost all species in mountain-dwelling prehistoric animals never fossilized. Think of it this way. Although unlikely, there may have been more dinosaurs on mountains than anywhere else in the world during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, but because of preservation bias, they will never be found. On the contrary, however, the biases lie with marine organisms, since they are, for their entire lives, and usually for long after their deaths, exposed to water. Thanks to preservation bias, we probably know more about extinct marine ecosystems than any other extinct biosphere. Because of preservation bias, an uncountable number of species have been lost forever in the journey of time, but thousands of others have been well-preserved for our eyes. Preservation bias is a relatively simple yet interesting topic in paleontology which explores how geography and climate can affect fossilization. It vastly affects our view of the past. I said it back in my video on sexual dimorphism in dinosaurs, and I'll say it again, it only takes the absence of a few key species to have a skewed vision of an extinct biosphere. Sadly, many species are completely lost, but many are still ready to be found. So remember, never stop searching. Thanks for watching. I apologize if this video seemed somewhat rushed or short. I just wanted to be able to put something out since I won't have my next Breaking Bad video ready for a little while. Uh, but I really enjoyed making this one because of how much I love paleontology. So let me know if you would like to see more videos like this or not. Alright, that's all for this week.